Ja, I feel myself 50-50, concert player and, uh, and teacher, because I think this, this, these are two kinds of fruits which you mix to, to a fruit salad, you know. So the, the teaching works uh, helps me a lot to be a concert player. And of course it's, uh, it, it, it brings you many, many human aspects, which also influence the playing, in, in my case. I ask a student, do it like this, do it like this, and then do it as I want it. And then you change it, but you need to be, uh, I think it's, it's great if uh, a musician has the flexibility to do things as he wants, or somebody else says, could you tell me, this is for chamber music, it's the most important thing when you are chamber musicians, you need to be flexible. And this is the only reason that I'm so strict in the good phrasing in a phrasing and in, in do it in two, three different versions and to learn it like technical things, you know, to, to learn phrasings like, um, like patterns, you know, as a part of, of like improvisations, you know, like scales and as more as you have. And the problem is to control it. So unfortunately, controlling things is the most important thing, difficult things. It has to do with inspiration, but more with hard work. Klein Gould is a very good example for that. You know, he could do everything. He did it in his way. Sometimes it's very crazy. But I saw when he, when he showed in a video, people expect me to play Mozart like this, and then he played a wonderful Mozart. And then he played his awful Mozart, which in my, for my taste, it's terrible. But he's able to play it in, in the way everybody expects, you know. And this is what I mean. So finally, in this I have changed, that I'm not so strict that the students have to play as I, I like it. Sometimes I say, I don't like it so much, because I don't have to say I like it, but you do it very convincingly, you know, and if, as far as it, as it is the own interpretation, and it can convince, then it's wonderful. The problem is that you are very near about your own ideas, and you want to, you want to press, you know, your idea on the interpretation of your student. And this sometimes, unfortunately, happens also in my work. I, I need to say, but I don't want that, you know. First, I thought the Andantino Sostenuto, that's a good, uh, in the beginning, I think it's, it's a, a good tempo. But during the evolution of the piece, I still thought it's too slow, it's too slow. Could you play it for me, only for me, a bit faster? You don't like it, I know. Because uh, that's already faster than... Um, I know, you want it, I know. Yeah, but this we know. I mean, we talked about that. Mm. I think you can play it much more espressivo, even not with a big forte. I think it's... My opinion, it stays like this. It's it's too static. Okay, uh, and here's the same as before. You play the same forte. Give more forte here. Ah, okay. Echo or more forte. Yeah, once again here. More forte. but then we can breathe, yeah. Pillow technique. Could you please explain more about this? Um, yes, of course I can. Um, you would say poduszka, poduszka technique or jasek technique, so if it's a, it's a small pillow. So 
a pillow technique means um, it's easy to explain. So when you have a, a, a kind of um, solution or you have a um, an appoggiatura, so it's very easy to explain. Like to doing like this, you know, like to sit on a pillow or to put your or your hat on a pillow, and then do it a bit more, a bit stronger or it's a big pillow or a small pillow so if you have a pillow con kilo a collection uh, then you are open for many many different kind of possession bit more free a bit more free it's too much german you know do it so it's easy when you give little pillows to her, to her, to her, to her, and then So when you have little pillows but different, then you have a free phrasing, you know? More or less, uh, something to, to practice. But you understand what yeah. I mean? Of course you can do It's also possible, yeah. But it's a bit more free, you know? So it's nothing else as a kind of possession. You do tiu, tiu, ti, a, i, a, u, a, i, a. So, and, and this helps a lot for phrasing, finishing phrasings, and also to accelerate. Because very often when we accelerate a phrase, we do diddle 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 diddle. So if you do it with pillows, so you can accelerate and not to uh, to lose the pulsation. So the second finger needs to pillow, you know, like that. Very important that you have It's very difficult, I know. So pillow is a, is a very wide um, idea of, um, of a very soft uh, pressure on the note, you know. Bad thing is for to talk about appoggiatura. So that will have more the feeling that the chord... It's not... It's a kind of, of, of gesticulation also, no? We come from... That's wrong. It's my tempo, okay. How to become a student of Tillman Hopstock? Yes, the first thing is, you, all the students who want to come to be, become a student, they have to, to buy the whole program of Pre Music Verlag. And then you become a student. That would be wonderful. I would be a rich man. No, I'm, of course, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, it's nothing special. The normally, the normal case is that uh, students, they come in contact, you know, and, and then you ask them to send me a video, or normally they, they put a video on YouTube and I see the video and normally before we have the auditions very often I know who will be the next student. That's very important because most of the students they come from far away and if they don't do a tour with, with auditions they only come to the academy I should know what's going on because I cannot ask for a, for a long trip and then I say no no it's not possible. So this is the normal way and I think it happened to many of my colleagues that the students come in contact and, and they have a desire to come to the academy and so it works like this. Very, very simple, very easy. It, it happens always like this, they send an email or today it's very often a messenger, you know. And the most important thing is that I have to listen to a video or that I can see the students and you know, how they play. And and then we see, and, and, and very often they come uh, for, for three, four private lessons, you know. Because in a master class it's also possible, but it's more difficult. Also for a student, because you know, sometimes uh, the chemical doesn't work between two persons. And if you see somebody more private, I think it's easier also for the student to have a good feeling, you know. Because both sides need to, be, need to feel very good. But in general, very easy on the academy. So we have three 
different kind of bachelors. So, and then have a, a concert program. It's not a master, but a concert player program, which is which you can do after the bachelor. Yeah. To be honest, I think in any way it helps when you also compose. Whatever you do, it's, it's contemporary music or you write in an in, in older style. Um, in general, you, you, you learn a lot about the structure of music. The problem is when you compose for the guitar and you're a guitarist, that you're very, very easy. You come into the patterns and the typical guitar patterns. And this is, especially in this period of um, Impressionism, very, very dangerous. So there is one very good aspect and on the other side, a very dangerous aspect to be guitarist composer. But in general, I would say it helps a lot. What is a musical form for you? This is a very good question. I never got this question because it's so important for us as player and as composer, because this is like to build a house, you know. So the form is like uh, an architect, you know, he constructs a house, you know. Uh, what is he doing? He needs the, the, the certain point to gives stabilization to the house. And this is what we see in the form of a music. So, because very often as musicians, we go very, very deep inside in the music before we have an idea about the form, about the structure of the music. So there are always different uh, steps and levels to, to, to uh, entrance in the, in the music. Also, you can start in the, in, the, in the very small things, as in Baroque music you, you do. But in general, the form is, of course, the, is, is a top point in, in understanding music. The, the, the problem of, of playing music is that we very easily uh, repeat the same ideas, especially when we express in, in a very strong way that we repeat things. But you can die only once, you know. So things, things are always the best when you, can, um, when you can enjoy it once or two times in the same way. And this is the idea of the form and the phrasing and not to repeat. You can repeat, but you need a good reason to repeat the same phrase in the same way, you know. And so the most difficult thing is to phrase in a very simple way and then to change little things that gives another perspective to the music. When I was younger, it's a pity that I didn't play a bit slower in general, you know.
And to concentrate on music, in, in my case, it means very often that I talk to myself, go slower, go slow, do this wonderful phrasing, wait a little bit, breathe. I'm always doing this because I have the tendency to play a bit nervous. In general, I'm a nervous person. But on stage, I'm pretty calm. But sometimes I phrase too fast. So what I talk to my students very often, I do the same mistakes I criticize to my students, unfortunately. So for me, it's a, a, a challenge and a big help when I'm on stage to say calm, oh, phrase out, wait this try to come in love with this wonderful melody, you know, and, and to not to force too much, you know. And and then normally I play with less mistakes also, you know, because I'm more concentrate on the on the intention of the music, you know. How you see the future of the guitar? Is it on the right way? This is a very individual question because what I see is maybe different to what guitarists think. Because the most important thing is that the guitarists who are on their own way, they are happy. So how can I judge about the right or the wrong way? It's very easy to say that the guitarists, they live too much isolated in all these big festivals. It's only guitar. I know this kind of lamento. Um, in general, I see the future of the guitar very, very positive. Why? Because we have so many, many so many better teachers. Then I look back 40 years ago the, where the guitar was and we have so many many more good musicians on guitar. Even there is a big lament all that too many players are looking for technical things which is true but there is still a rest of so many more guitarists than 40 50 years ago who are really great musicians. So for this I see the guitar in a, in a good direction. Um, I'm a bit worried about, uh, about chamber music, which should be more part of the festival, should be a bit more, uh, we should pay more attention on these other instruments, you know, to combine, also in the festivals, you know. I mostly never see any concert with, uh, with singers, you know, and, and guitar. Uh, I think the guitar's on the right way. I, I, I couldn't say, I mean, you can see many things which are going wrong. But I always compare to older times, you know, and I see that education is much better when we see all this young generation of great players. The question is always the same, that maybe too many competitions can a bit destroy the musical intention. This is a, a big problem, but if you have teachers who, who support it in the right way to send the, the students in the right moment to the competitions. This is so important, you know. Then I also have a more positive, um, uh, positive, um, see more positive aspects in competitions than 20 years ago. I was more critical about that. Primmusik Verlag, what was your goal when you started to build your own publishing company? There was no goal. Uh, it was a very simple reason for that because um, I started with this Bach edition, this green book um, and this is about 25, 26 years ago and, and no publisher was interested, nobody. And then I started myself. It was really, this was the reason and I never expected to have um, such a big publishing house. I mean it's not a big house but <clears throat> for a person who is managing alone <clears throat> it's very big. Bach's lute works from the guitarist's perspective, volume 1 and 2, polyphony in Bach's fugues for lute. How long did it take you to complete the incredible work? And could you tell the main ideas and some important points of this book? Yes, there are two questions. Um, this took a long time. And to be honest, the first book I could write because I made a break of... Um, playing concerts and of um, teaching for one and a half years. This is about 12 years ago. And so I had much time to go deeper in this um, material. To be honest, I was working 20 years ago. So this is not just I started with the book, though there was a time of two decades before. And so it took, then it took about two years each book to write. 
but as I said, two years is not so long, but but it is the time before which which is very very important to me. Um, and the main ideas, yeah, there are two ideas. I mean, I collected many things uh, which had been um, had been written in other books and articles. So, in one way, it's a collection, and I think in one way, I hope that I. <clears throat> discovered some things really new um, and during the time in this process I, I discovered many things it was not that I just wrote down things I knew before though I I went more deep and deep and deep and thought oh this could be interesting and this oh there I have a new idea and and even in the same way as I um, looked to the form of a piece it was very important for me to create a form in this book and not to um, to be a professor to know everything much better than anybody else. So there are many doubts in the book, and this is very important. That um, with with writing a lot, the problem is, or the good thing is, that you create new questions. So in the book, uh, with all these answers, there are many questions left. So because about bass music, which is so incredible and important for us, there are still more questions than answers. So after writing these three books, the way of interpretation for me was much more open and, and less um, defined. So and this can bring you in trouble in, in my case, but I like it. So we don't know which is the right way to play Bach or Mozart. <laughs> Your publications for kids and beginners. Could you tell more about this? I love kids. Even I don't have kids, you know. And I started with transcriptions for kids about 30 years ago, long, long time ago. And my first edition in Primusik Verlag was the Bach and two books for kids. So 25 years ago, I had this idea of open string music for kids, you know. And um, you know, that's so interesting. To make a transcription for a very good player is difficult, of course. But you always have many options. But to make um, a transcription for a kid, you always need to jump into the kid's world. You know, what do they like? What are the fingers? The, the, the hands are very small. What can they do? You have to 
think about good fingerings. And then to make a transcription, which should sound as best as possible, but as easy as possible. This is the big challenge, you know. So uh, it needs, to be honest, much more imagination and fantasy um, to make good transcriptions for kids, you know. And, and this helped me a lot for my other transcriptions too, to be honest. So it's a good synthesis to me. How do you see yourself in five to 10 years? It depends. I'm an optimist or a pessimist. So I see myself with less hairs, for example. Uh, I'm afraid of that. In the next five to 10 years, I'm going pension. So I will finish my teaching work. So I don't know what happens then because I love teaching and I'm a bit afraid because I don't have kids, you know. I don't, I don't know what about teaching, you know. Maybe I can, can continue a little bit on the academy, but normally it's not possible. So, because this period between five and 10 years, it's very difficult, you know. I mean, I see myself giving master classes, maybe one or two concerts a year, I have no idea. Of course, I will go more often to Italy because my wife, she lives in Italy. She is also a guitarist, she teaches there. I think I will spend more time in Italy, you know. Mm. And maybe to work a little less, but it's difficult. I'm a workaholic. It's fortunate that all the things I dreamed I would do, I would done. So everything I do now is a plus. Are you a happy person? This is 100% what I could sign. I would go one step more. If I would die today, it would be okay. But it's the same what I said 10 years ago. So my desire, what I wanted to, for example, the recordings I wanted to, I really wanted to do, I have done 15 years ago. So everything in this, everything is a plus for me. Any concerts I do, I, I don't play very often, I laugh. Any new student, everything is a plus for me. So I, for 100% I can say I'm a happy person.